Welcome back to the official Beast Lab. In this episode today, we have goalie Angie Benson from Athletes Unlimited. She didn't become a professional overnight. She started in a small town in Florida. She has a fascinating story about how strength and conditioning has molded her career and where she plans on taking it next. Let's see what Angie has to say today. Episode two here at the official Beast Lab. I'm here with Angie Benson today. Just so you understand who you're speaking to here, Angie's got a fascinating story. We'll get to that in the post game. She's originally from Florida. She was a starter as a freshman at Towson. She's a goalie. Uh, she took a couple years off. She went to VTech. She graduated as the career uh, record holder for goals against average, and now she's a pro. So what I want to do now today is I want to welcome Angie Benson to the official Beast Lab. Hey, thanks for having me. This is going to be super fun. Can't wait. Yeah, this is awesome, and I'm really glad that you came on today because you have a pretty unique story, and I really want to get into that stuff later. Uh, but for the beginning of this, as a professional goalie in um, Athletes Unlimited, the professional uh, league for women, I wanted to un get your opinion on from a strength and conditioning standpoint people at home this is what this is about learning people's different uh, takes on strength and conditioning and, and all that stuff where did you first dive into the training realm and where did that first affect you uh, I would probably say high school uh, like down in Florida we don't have field hockey or like winter sports you know um, so we have other things for title nine like we have a lot of flag football um, we also have weightlifting so weightlifting was just a sport that was done in, in the winter. Um, I was on the golf team and in the fall and I played lacrosse in the spring and I used to be in band, but the band director basically kicked me out because I played too many sports to miss practice. So I was like, all right, well, I'm free. I want another varsity letter. Like what sport can I get another varsity letter in? So I chose like golf and weightlifting. I was like, boom, done deal. So, so I had a varsity letter every season, yeah. So weightlifting is an actual competitive sport in Florida? Yeah, it's like powerlifting. Uh, you would do the pause, press, bench, and the clean and jerk. And you get tested on those two things, and you add your totals, and you have weight classes, you wear singlets, you have judges. Uh, but the judges are, are coaches because it's not like an official sport, but it's a sport, you know? So it's um, kind of like a club sport in high school? Uh, it's part of FHSAA, but there's no like, like in lacrosse, there's no like governing body, yeah. if that makes sense. So all the coaches are like the governing body in a way. I never knew that. And it's also interesting to hear that bench and clean and jerk are the two things. Usually you see like powerlifting. Yeah, usually it's deadlift, squat and bench or clean and jerk and snatch in weightlifting. So it's not Olympic. So yeah. you're gonna take out snatch. So that's honestly snatch is like scare the crap out of me. I just like don't do it. And I don't even throw anything over my head after high school because it just like was scarring seeing some chicks just get wrecked with the bar after a jerk and like their our arms just give out and boom right into it. I'm like, yeah, not throwing anything over my head. After <laughs> that's freaking ridiculous. You'll never catch me doing CrossFit. Nothing. Like I'll do powerlifting. And I would do some type of Olympic lifts, but like nice and controlled. But after that, I was just like, no way. Um, so yeah, that's what I competed in. Uh, I made it to States for three years. I had competed in two different weight classes. I kind of grew, puberty hit. Uh, I wouldn't say I was like the healthiest way or the most educated way. If I knew what I knew now, then different story. But oh yeah, last time, not the smartest, you know, sauna days, like, in the trash bag, like just sweating it all out, trying to make the soup with weight, but also trying to be super strong at the same time. And then you measure your meal. It's just dumb, honestly. I wouldn't completely recommend it, but I also recommend it if you do it, if you do it right. So that's where I'm at with high school. <laughs> that's basically exactly how I explain being a professional lacrosse player. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you end up there, fantastic. Um, fantastic. <laughs> hopefully that story changes in 10 years. Yeah, so when I, when I, realized I didn't want to wrestle anymore. It's when I was at school one day and I was wearing a trash bag under my sweatsuit and I was trying to sweat it out so I could make weight for the, that incoming weekend. Yep. And I was like, I shouldn't be doing this. Like, I'm, I, 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 can't, I can't like flirt with a girl wearing a trash bag in the middle of science class. This, this is not how it's supposed to work. 
You're an oh. angry human. You're an angry <laughs> yeah. human cutting weight. Like I had no friends during weightlifting. I had friends that were like, yeah, hit me up after season. Cause I was just like a bitch. Like, I don't know yeah. if I can curse on here. It's your second episode. Sorry. You can do anything but you want. It's just like, I wasn't super nice and no one wanted to be around me cutting weight. So yeah, it wasn't my favorite. No, it's not. And, 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 you know, you actually said something that's pretty key and that's what I really want to hone in on. The differences between, because we all thought we knew, right? We all, like when I was in high school, I was like, I read men's health. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I know that I'm supposed to do chest on Monday. And then I got to college and my Penn State strength coach, Brad Pantall was like, you don't know anything. He's like, you don't know how to bench. You think you know how to, you don't know how to bench. You don't know how to squat. You don't know how to do anything deadlift related. So my question to you is when you first started training, if you could go back now, what would be the difference in how you would approach it? Um, honestly, more female role models. I'm not going to lie. Cause when I was going through like puberty and gaining muscle and, and lifting and like looking super different in high school, usually girls experience that in college when they first start to lift. But I started experiencing my body getting more muscular in high school and all of who taught me were all men, really strong men. I, I had a lot of resources. I did well. Like I wouldn't say I was a terrible lifter, but like, I also didn't see anyone that looked the way I looked and the people that were teaching me are also manly. So then I got this perspective, like, oh, am I going to look like a man if I keep gaining muscle? Oh, like, oh, are women supposed to be strong? Am I supposed to bench this much? Man, I feel good. I, I feel really strong. I like how I feel, but like, is this okay? So I wish I just had more of an understanding of like who does this and like why women do it or like just seeing other people do it because all I saw were my peers and that was it so I just connected with people my age and that I wouldn't say was the most beneficial people to connect with for this type of sport so um, resource wise I had everything I, I needed I'm very fortunate and grateful for that but education and like seeing people who look like just muscular women or athletic women, people who perform well, wasn't around me at the time. Wow. There's actually two things that I would hope we'd get into, but I didn't want to force it because I wanted to uh, oh, hear it from you. Two things. One, tell me about the difference because for me as a guy, I actually, it's funny, people call, make fun of me because of the nickname Beast, right? right? They think that I popped out of the ground in college and was like, no, 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 no. It's Beast now, guys. Um, I got that nickname because I got made fun of for being so skinny and I couldn't play lacrosse well as a freshman in high school and all I wanted to do was hit people. So the older kids would yell beast from the sidelines. So for me as a kid, as a male, all you want to do is get big and strong, right? right? I mean, we always laugh about it. You look at action heroes, Sylvester Stallone, you know, Ivan Drago, like yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, like, get like, big, dude, get big and strong. Big at no point in my life, though, did I say, man, is this, is this too manly? Um, are people going to like me? So I'm picturing myself, ignorant Greg in middle school or high school, and I'm going to school with Angie, who is now benching more than me, is now more shredded than I am. How does that affect the way I feel about her, whether it's as a friend and jealousy because she's stronger than me? Or if I'm completely outside of the box, I'm like, I don't know if I find that attractive. Tell me about the struggle for a female who wants to get stronger and compete, but has to deal with that nonsense. Oh, my dating life was trash. Like, it <laughs> sucks so bad. Uh, like, um, well, we would weight lift in like the football weight room, right? That was the weight room of the school. Classic. So then we had what? football was doing like spring training or whatever I don't really follow football but there weren't in season but they were lifting and we would have to share the weight room with the boys and we had the girls a lot stronger than all of them so like that it was like in an egotistical way maybe a little narcissistic I'm like hell yeah ha ha but like also in like a social setting and maybe in like a relationship type of way that's not a turn on for me. If I'm stronger than you, I think that's an issue. And I'm not asking that you be like the buffest guy in the room or anything like that, but 
I think females with muscle are strong. That's fine. But like, if we're going to do biological stuff and men with muscle, if you're just a man that works out, you should just be stronger than me, no matter how much I lift. I, I'm, I'm being like super yeah, look, like, it's, no it's how just much genetics. I, at, at, yeah. At, like no matter age, how yeah. much I lift, you should just be stronger if you're just an in shape male. Like, yeah. And I hate the people might get mad at me saying that. But no, I'm because it's same. science. Look, I'm a, I'm a people to, I'm a progressive. Okay. I'm telling you right now, scientifically speaking, you don't have testosterone. You don't have a choice. That's why when I was a strength coach, when I moved into New York and I was in the private sector, every female would come to me and think that they're the only woman. Taylor Cummings and I got into this a little bit in episode one. Every female I trained their first thing, they thought they were the only woman on the earth who was just going to look like me after one week of lifting weights. Yeah. They don't want to lift weights, but they'll go and jump on a bike for an hour and do resistance training for their little spin class. I'm not putting down spin class. Um, and that's resisted for your quads for how long? An hour? Five days yeah. a week? So, yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, so it, it was rough. But I guess my, my social setting or people would be like, oh, like Angie can beat your ass and like start throwing me in their fights because I was the, the strong kid. So now Here's I got to watch like. Hey, yeah, <laughs> yo, Angie can beat your ass. Like, it's just, and I didn't like that because then now people thought I was aggressive because I was just strong and I didn't like walk around like that. I didn't say I can beat anyone's ass. People just automatically assumed just it. it. How many people watching this right now are nodding their heads, right? They're like, yeah. like for me, I go to, if I go to like a Vegas pool party, you know what I wear? I wear a hat that says, let's be friends on it. Because I, and I make sure my ring is very in front of people. I'm not here to steal your girl. I have kids. I just happen to have traps, but I also like fun. You know, I think you're right. It comes with that whole aggressive, you want to be a bro type of thing. Right. So then you grow up, right? You start looking at the internet. You start seeing people that are older that might have muscle. And now, now the motto is like, okay, why look good in clothes when you can look good naked? Now that's like a whole different shift from like my high school self, right? Yeah. Now I'm like in my college self. I'm like, all right, screw these little boys that don't want to date me because I'm stronger than them. Let me go find the man that that enjoys what I built for myself. And like that's where I went to. So like it's just a shift of thinking. Cause before again, like MIT Manly will men like me. And then like the older I got, I started attracting different types of men. And like that type of man is what I was attracted to. Cause it's like they appreciated what I did to get this strong or to have this performance or like what I'm doing. They're like, they admire what I do. Again, they might not be like the bulkiest man or whatever, but it's like at least an in-shape guy that appreciates like the hard work I put into myself. And that is what I would go for. It doesn't really matter what you look like, but you have to appreciate what I've done and you can't make me feel bad about myself or the way I look. Like, no. That's a no -go. So what drew me, and I, and I want to get to your point in a second, because I want to ask you the same question. What drew me to strength conditioning, aside from, you know, being a young guy that wants to get in shape, is I learned very early on the empowerment behind it. You have parents, uncles, aunts, teachers, coaches, everybody in your life at that age is telling you what to do. You're the only one who has complete control of what you look like. Yep. And that was so empowering for me. Yep. And was that, was that the case for you? Oh, yeah. Is he no one could tell you what to do. Yep. Yeah. I mean, again, that's probably why your strength coach probably told you you knew nothing when you got to college because you got so empowered by how the way you can shape yourself. You, you, yeah. you listen I mean, every, to your body. Yeah, every kid who, who, at least boys growing up in my era, every guy who had a muscle and fitness magazine thought he knew he was a trainer. You know, meanwhile, I had no clue at all. Um, but that intrinsic nature is what got me curious. That's why I ended up a kinesiology major because I was obsessed with the human body and how fascinating it was and how you can manipulate it um, through hard work. And that's the thing. I think for me, I, I'll admit, like my, my turn-ons were always, if you have a six-pack and you had a squat booty, that's 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 that was that's what I was into. For guys too, guys yeah. need to not skip leg day. I'm gonna say this for the people in the back. Like do not skip leg day. The ladies check out the men's booties. It is what it is. I'm going to say it straight up. Like, I think it's the biggest turnoff if you skip, if you're like just a V and then 
nothing underneath that just doesn't make sense look like you could slide right off a chair if you sat down yeah and that i honestly is in direct correlation of other performances you do in life so i'm just gonna assume if you skip some form of leg day i don't really know how you are in other aspects in this relationship <laughs> yeah look i mean let's let, <laughs> let's shoot it straight we'll let the imaginations go on that one but i will say this you guys out there who are listening right now, there's nothing wrong if you can't get your calves bigger, okay? Some of you guys are trying your best out there, and I love you for it, okay? Long tendons, it's a curse. I tell my dad all the time, like, thank you for your shoulders. I hate you for your calves, man. Abs. God. Um, now, let's look at your, so you were, you were doing the powerlifting thing. How did that correlate? When you got the towels in your freshman year, when you were introduced to collegiate strength and conditioning, how different was it for you? Was it harder because you had a certain idea of what training was or was it actually easier because of your base? Um, I was just like, you know, uh, you know, I was a strong kid, but stupid, right? So yeah, I was like the strongest kid in the weight room as a freshman, literally outlifted everyone, but I was also like dumb as rocks when it came to like performance training. Um, I thought strength was performance and it's definitely not. So, um, yeah, my trainer, her name was Kylie. She was just like, sit down, dude. Like, she was <laughs> like, she was like, what you feel like? She's like, shut up. Um, I was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. So, um, it was different, but then I started learning because now, now you had like nutritionists built in. I didn't have a nutritionist in high school. So now I had other resources in tech. Now I had rehab, I had recovery, uh, we just started tracking sleep. That's when the technology and, and studies started coming out was around my freshman year with like LeBron. What year James. was that again? 2015, 16. Okay. Just so people have a reference of when. Yeah. 2015, 16 is when like basically LeBron was like, yeah, I sleep 12 hours a day. And then people were like, let me just freaking study sleep and sleep performance. And I actually took a sleep class at Towson, all the athletes took it. It was just like one of those classes, you know? And we got the nap in class and we wrote about our sleep journals and diaries, but I didn't realize how important sleep was until I took that class. You can literally die of sleep deprivation before food deprivation. So I am like, yo, that's wild. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, okay, I need to focus on my sleep. And then just moved on to athletes. Their studies were based off sleep apnea for football players. Like, why do we keep telling men to get bigger necks when they're basically suffering in their sleep snoring. So it was just like, that was the whole study. And I was like, all right, super interested. So that's when I started taking my recovery more and then paid attention to my performance training because now I, I felt good. And that wow. was a huge difference between college and, and high school. And honestly, back then, I still didn't know the stuff I, I knew now or know now. So it's a lot different. The sleep thing is so fascinating. I would love to study more about sleep performance that's a class i totally would have taken i can't do it now because i have a four week old and all it's yeah, going to do is make me sense. sadder um let's just say my numbers are down right now um how's the whoop <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I took my whoop off i was like dude i don't need no, to be told no nah, man i got so there's two things i whoop i like whoop i don't need something reminding me of that my battery human wise is at one percent all the time and every time someone asked me what time it was, I'd look at my wrist. And I was like, you can't tell, there's no clock on a whoop. So I just went and got an Apple Watch. I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Um, now, when you, you left Taos and you went home for a while, you were home for about two years before you went to VTech. When you were living on your own, what was the difference? Was training something you kept doing because you needed it mentally? Or was it something that could, kind of took a back burner because you were focused on survival and, and a job and all that stuff? Oh, it was like straight Darwinism at its finest. Like I had an identity crisis, so I quit lacrosse, right? My whole life it was, was lacrosse. I didn't want to wear any lacrosse gear because I was tired of someone referring me as a lacrosse player. I was like, I don't play lacrosse, so I quit, right? I was just like, kind of an asshole, but whatever. And then I realized, damn, I have no clothes because all my clothes <laughs> is freaking lacrosse. So I was like, Oh crap, I'm also broke because I just quit lacrosse and now I'm on my living on my own. I didn't move back home. So now I'm like, okay, like what do I do? I also live in Florida 
where there's a gym on every freaking corner. I don't yeah. know if you've been to Florida, but oh, yeah. the lifestyle here, you're half naked all day. So it's just like, if I'm wearing a bikini 24 seven, I also have to look the part. Now I realized I had no run test. I have no one telling me what to do ever for the first time. Um, I didn't have to perform. I, didn't, I just had to look good. And I was like, okay, let me get into the fitness a different way. So I, I'm a big YouTuber. I don't really watch TV. I don't know. I've been Netflix fan. I'm just a huge like TED talk uh, in a nutshell, just documentaries or vlogs or whatever. I'm just always, if I'm going to waste time, I'm wasting time learning something. And I would just basically just research like bodybuilders or like fitness influencers and like what they did and how can I get abs nicer? Like, it was just like, how can I sculpt this part of my body? What do I actually need to eat to not die and feel like miserable? Like just things like that. Um, So then I got sponsored by an apparel company and I was like, sick, free clothes. Dope, I can do that. Um, One last thing. Yeah, one last thing I had to pay for it. Next was Avocare. I know you were, you're into Avocare. I was in Avocare um, for a long time. One of my clients, I couldn't get away from a class. I was coaching the whole entire time. So one of my clients was like, hey, Ange, like, this would be super great for you. You know, the, the spiel. But and I was like, all right, sick. I've been like a hustler since I was in middle school. So like duct tape wallets, bracelets, gum, whatever. Like always gotten in trouble for things. And I was like, Psh okay, I can sell this crap, like whatever. So I ended up selling so much. This is before they changed their whole model. This was like kind of the, I don't want to say. Original pyramid scheme. Model. Yeah, I was like yeah. pyramidal scheme, but like whatever. I took full exposition for this whole entire thing. Uh, ended up selling so much. I got all the bonuses. I moved up. I got, I paid for rent. Like I was like, all right, sick. And then people just were reoccurring clients. Um, so then I got really into supplements and I was like, all right, well, I actually like them. I thought they were clean. I don't know if you like them, but I actually, well, I still, well, I will say this people who I advocate, if you get into advocate, you sell it and you take it, you could actually make a ton of money. money. And the, and the cool thing about advocate, the reason I got into it, my old strength coach, Brad at Penn state, my original boss is the one who got me into it. And I was under his tree. And I was a strength coach with 30, 40 clients. And they're asking me, Greg, you know, can I take this dark rage? And I'm like, Marshall, you're 60 years old. You're going to die. Like, here, take this spark, take spark, work out. It has informed choice. So if you're a college athlete or a high school athlete and you're listening to this, Advocare is actually a phenomenal way for you to start getting into supplementation and do it safely because their stuff is actually super clean. And they test it. Mm-hmm. They have been, everything's informed choice to prove, which is like yep. you spend extra money to make sure it's qualified. More times it's not, more times than not, it's approved by NCAA. I don't want to say it's not. I just had to catch some uh, lacrosse player the other day was like advertising these supplements. And I was like, that's funny. You can't even take that in the NCAA. Like, why are you advertising it? And she's like, oh my God, I didn't even notice. And I was like, okay. Uh-oh, test. Here it comes. Yeah, yeah, beat <laughs> test. Now some kid's gonna get fail a drug test because they bought your freaking supplement that you advertised as a college player. And I was like, Are you an ambassador? Or are you yeah, Jillian Michaels out here selling fat burners that are giving people strokes? Awesome. Yeah, wild. No, so Avocare, I I love Avocare. I still use it. I don't push it as much as I used to, but the fact that I still use it, it's what's been like seven years later. I'm there. You go. Yeah. Putting <laughs> right there. So you got into the supplementation, you, it, it paid for your rent, you were doing pretty well. Tell me about when you got that call to go back to Virginia Tech. What was the initial thought? Because I, 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 I got two calls this summer to ask to come back to the PLL for teams that had injuries. And the initial thought was like, oh God, I would love to get out there right now. The other thought was, I better start running. I'm in trouble. Um, so l- let me know what your response was. Yeah, so I get a text message out of the blue from like one of these club teams down here. And I was like, why are you texting? Like, you want one of my players? Like, what? And they're like, no, Virginia Tech like wants your number. And I was like, sick. Like, what player are they looking at on my team? Like, let me know <laughs> like, who I can talk to. Like, I was completely it was just like, no yeah. way. Really cool. And, you off, call, and he's like, John Sung's like, hey, Ansha, like you come play for tech. And I literally laughed. I was like, <laughs> no way. 
absolutely not. Like I, I basically just laughed in his face and said, no. And he was just like, well, what, what do you mean? Like, we'll, we'll work it out. Like it'll be in your favor, yada, yada, yada. And I was just like, all right, dude, look, I'm not coming out of retirement to play for three months. If I'm going to play, we're, we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to go all the way. Keep in mind, I'll, I'll do my part. I'll do what I need to do. I'll perform at the way you want me to perform. But like at the end of the day, I'm not hanging up my cleats after the three months. So something needs to be figured out. Yeah. And like, I'm not going to sit here, get rid of my business because this is when NIL wasn't a thing. So God forbid. I yeah, actually God got forbid you make a living. Yep. Yeah, I literally could have been making a living all through my college. Not the point, whatever. So I had to give away my business literally do community service hours, pay a fine just to get reinstated. So I was like, yo, man, I'm like, I'm losing a lot. So I've used it as an investment uh, for my future and career. All right. My business will probably be better if I get more awards or do well for myself as an individual player. And also if the team success as well as a business, that looks good. Like everyone in the professional league, like literally advertises their teams and individual success. That is how you make a living. I hate when people are like, oh, like, it's not about you. Yeah, no, it is. Like, this is how, how people put on their plate. I hate Amen. Like that. Um, so that was also like another thing. I was like, all right, they're in the ACC. Most people get drafted from the ACC. I'm playing against good competition. If I just do well against competition, like, I should be okay. Like, these are the things I'm going through my head before I even say yes to a big life-changing commitment that I had to do. Now, not only did... I not trained like an athlete for two and a half years. I was being a freaking NARP 20 year old that was doing <laughs> degenerate things. So now I'm like, oh, now I have to go be an athlete again. Sick. Yeah. Okay. So we figured out a deal, went there and I was just like, all right, Darwinism kick in again on like a d- different realm. How can I just be a freaking monster? Like all I wanted to do is just be a monster. I didn't care how I didn't care how strong I was. I didn't care how fast I was. I just wanted to be the strongest and the fastest. Like, it didn't matter how, what it took. Um, so then I just got on, like, bear crawls and, like, sled push it. Just, like, sh- I don't know, just very yeah. Real powerful shit. stuff. Yeah, like, no bullshit stuff. And I got there, uh, did well on all the fitness tests. They changed my running test because they wanted me to do the manual. And I was like, look, man, like, I'm a freaking goalie. Um, I maybe run maybe 50 yards and I haven't trained for a man you in two and a half years. And you want me to play the sport I haven't played in two and a half years within two weeks. I didn't go to fall ball. Oh, I didn't I know that. Up. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, I showed up and had two weeks of practice and then played a season. Was there, so was, because at Penn State, my junior year, this happened. The incoming freshman who was supposed to be our new starter Um, the senior quit because of it. The freshman wasn't eligible in the spring. So we had open tryouts for a goalie. And he came in and we won our conference with him. Um, So is that what happened with you? They just had like a a random situation that popped up? No. Their starting goalie got hurt, couldn't play, tore ACL. And then they had backup goalies, but I got a phone call. All right. So that's where I was at. So I was already in a really sticky situation. It, like, one, I'm not welcome, to put it that way. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I was going to say, from a team dynamic standpoint, if I'm, because I don't know how the women's side of it is, from a men's side. Right. If you say, hey, guys, look, we have our backups. Who are your friends? Or we have this stud coming in. I'd be like, all right, look, like, I'm going to be nice to them because I want them, you know, I would love for them to be a stud, yeah, I but I want to see. And then the first day of practice, it's like, yo, best friend, best friend. So how did it work out for you with that? I knew I had to play to get the respect. I had so much pressure. Not only I came out of the coaching world. So not only did I have like a bunch of little kids, like now we have fans, right? So now we have kids that are looking to see if, what I coached them is true in my playing career. Mm -hmm. So that's one. So two, now in a team with a bunch of chicks, chicks are way different than dudes. Uh, They have to bond in order to compete. They don't compete the bond. So now I'm like, okay, the goalie's usually friends with everyone. 
the main friends out of the, the picture in recovery right now. The other ones aren't playing, so I don't even know what they think about me. Um, now we just have a team that really wants a goalie. Um, so I just played like the first week I sucked. I was like, yo, this sucks. Like freaking don't get, get miss yeah. getting hit with the ball. I was like running blows. I was like lifting two of these suck. Like, I was like, what is this stuff? Like my NARP life was so nice. I kayaked every morning. I went to the <laughs> beach. Like I chilled. I did not like I went to class. Like now I'm like full blown student athlete. I was like, yo, don't miss this. So it took me a little bit to acclimate back into that. And I was like, investment, it's an investment. And keep in mind, like I was in the real world for two and a half years where I'm with people surrounded me who's never stepped foot in the real world in their life. Like they probably don't have a credit card. I had a 401k. Like I did like things. I ran a business. I paid taxes. I did like, it's it just like, I did life things that weren't, I had a hard time relating if that makes sense. I wasn't trying to go back to the college environment. So I knew playing was the only way to get respect. And like, again, people I hate to say it. And I just say things that people don't like, but usually the kids that are good are the ones that people talk to on every team. Usually the good, the good players have friends. It is, yep. They gravitate, it's even nature. if they're like the, the meanest person on the team, guess what? If they're the best person, they still got friends. Um, mm. So yeah. I know you hate to admit it, but again, like that's just like the world we live in. So Unless I figured, yeah, I was like, I figured I was like, okay, let me just be good. Let me try. And we came out of the gates hot my first season there. Um, and like the team vibes just kind of like rolled off each win, each win. And like, we're breaking records. We're doing this. And it was just like, okay. So I gained the respect through my play, but I will say it was super hard to, to relate to them on like a, on a personal level or, just in like a life standpoint, I was just, I'm like, I want to go pro, I want to do this. And people are like, yeah, I'm not here to do any of that. So yeah, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, it was just like awkward. So I made friends, don't get me wrong, but but no, I, I wouldn't say it was like the most easiest transition I've had. Yeah, and I, I will say, my wife and I talk about it all the time, I wish it was uh, required to do a one year work yeah, release here. between high school to college because people would act totally different in college. That is true, but I will say if I didn't get this offer, I was really close to dropping out because I was doing so well with my work. So it was yeah. like, okay, my business was taking off. Why am I going to school? If people go to school to make money, I'm making money. Why do I need this? Uh, I'm not going to try and be like, I was a biology major. I was like, I don't want to be a doctor. Like I'm just taking these classes and passing. So if I didn't play lacrosse, I don't think I would go back, but because I went back, I will say I had a completely point of view and perspective on not only my playing, but also my classwork. I thought it was kind of like chump change after being in the real world yeah. <laughs> for a little bit. Paying taxes or taking, you know, chem. Yeah, I'll take chem. I'll take chem. Like I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> Like, geez, I'm not going to get arrested if I mess up. Like, you know. <laughs> the, the thing that's interesting to me, <clears throat> and this is what I, I really can, can connect with you on, is you bet on yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you were, like you said, you were making money. But you were like, if I can go back and I can prove that what I teach works and people are going to be paying attention, there's a ton of pressure on that. Like I tell people all the time, all this behind me, I really didn't enjoy much of it. Because yeah, no, it was visible. <laughs> once when I was a strength coach, lacrosse was actually more fun for me. When the FOA started taking off in 2012, the amount of people who hated me for it because they were making that money teaching God knows what, suddenly I showed up saying, no, 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 this is the perfect way to do this. This is how you do it. People are like, oh yeah, let's see it. Oh, he's setting records. Well, he still doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, like I thought in 2015, I went out and I told people, I was like, I went out to retire everybody. Like I went out to say, look, what I'm doing is absolutely the best, but the amount of pressure, like every game that season, I would go 80%. I couldn't wait for the games to be over because I was so stressed out. And I thought if I have one bad game, no one's gonna, FOA is gonna totally collapse no and it's not gonna work. Anymore. Yeah. Yep. And now here I am, yeah, it was like a depression. 37 years old, and I'm seeing people copying what we do 
with no proof at all that they know what they're talking about and kids still go. Yep. So I'm like, man, I wish I knew back then that there was, I didn't have to have that much pressure. Now, yeah, but I love the investment that you put I in yourself. Do. I mean, it makes sense. Like my business before I wasn't anything I was now and I was making good money. And like, just because I knew what I was thought I was doing or I had a product that showed results. Like, yeah, I trained a kid. Guess what? That kid did X, Y, Z now after training. Okay. So something kind of works. So now when I was playing the first time, my first year I came back was fine. And then COVID happened. And like, my future is very uncertain. I had to come back and take another year. No one knew I was coming back. So imagine being someone that recovered from your, your injury, getting ready to play. And then I come back to, to, to play again. So that was another dynamic uh. as well. And now it's like, okay, is there a pro league? We don't know. Everything's getting bought out or out of business. Like, I didn't even know what my future was. What was the point of coming here? So, like, I completely understand, like, betting on yourself. And people can really hate you for it. And it sucks. But, like, at the end of the day, like, look at what you're doing and look at what I'm doing. And I think we came out, we came out okay. Yeah, there's a lot of haters in the way. But, like, at the end of the day, like, what we did was successful. So obviously something something worked. And it's what and I'm, I guarantee next episode is with Scotty Rogers. I guarantee we're gonna get into this. Is haters don't affect my mortgage. Like yeah. you you sliding in my DMs saying something to me. I live in a house, man. I live in a house. Yeah. I got two kids, and my life is awesome. So <clears throat> hate haters really don't affect me. It doesn't affect my wallet. Um, so now that you're in the pros, AU Athletes Unlimited. Taylor and I spoke about it last in the first episode about how unique and awesome of an experience it is now you did come back for an investment but are you happy that you're playing lacrosse again at that level experiencing that and then you're training now give us a breakdown of what your training looks like right now um so go back to your first question probably my final season at tech i was not enjoying lacrosse it was very hard for me to play and perform the way I want. It was like that pressure we talked about, like, damn, if I do bad, what happens? And I really let that get to me. Um, and, it, and it just like dis destroyed my whole entire season. And like I, my performance was affected by it for sure, just the mentality. So then I go into USA tryouts. Who knows why I was invited? So I was like, I have nothing to lose. And I like thought I did well, I gained confidence there. Um, so then I go into AU, somehow managed getting captain first week. Whoever's idea was that, I don't know who, who thought of that, but ended up getting it. Um, I thought I performed well, and other people thought I performed well at USA tryouts. So people were confident in, like, what I was doing, which was super nice and, like, a complete 180 direction of yeah. what I, yeah, I just came from. So, like, okay, now we're going. But now I had this, like, platform I didn't necessarily ask for, like, once you know me, I do the things I've been doing, I've been doing for way before I was ever a lacrosse player, but people just see it now and think I'm just like this lacrosse player that talks like, no, I say whatever the hell I want when I want half the time. And I've been doing this for as long as I've been alive. And now people are just starting to, to listen. So I had this, this platform from me being retired, from me playing again, from me being this voice, from me doing something else. I had like a, a a cluster of just random people following me. And now I felt different pressure in my performance. So I felt like in the league at the beginning, I like choked first game. I choked. Like I was like, he, yo, the ball is fast. And <laughs> I can't see shit. Like I was like, this is, <laughs> I was like yo, this is wild. Everybody has that first pro adjustment though. That first yeah. day is tough, man. The first day I was like, and I'm captain and I have all these eyes on me. And I just did this. And I just did that. My name's on this. I just made that. And I'm just like, hey, hey, hey. and I just like shit the bed. I was like, all right, cool. Got that out of the way. So I figured if I can only shit the bed once, you know, <laughs> so, um, figured the only way is up from here uh, to prepare for it. I was fresh out of season. I haven't had an off season in over a year. Uh, so you got to keep that in mind. And I was playing against women that had an off season for two years. So I had constant uh, training. So I felt like I had, was at an advantage point for that, but I also didn't know what to expect because the rules change. Uh, the shots I saw in the league were not the shots I see in, in college. You, the shots you don't expect are the ones that went in and you're just like, oh, you can do that now. Yeah. Oh, 
okay, <laughs> sick adjustment. Like, like yeah, this, I don't know that happened. Oh no, angle shots. Both go in. Like you know, yeah. like you just usually I I just get pelted in the NCAA game. Like if I stand here and I do my job, I'm supposed to make the save. Now I'm going against people like Taylor Trainer, where her craft is literally no angle crease rolls. And it's going to go in because that's what she does best. And oh, I'm just over here like, okay, I did everything I was supposed to do and, and, and it didn't work. So <laughs> now how do I, how do I train for that? So I wouldn't, wouldn't say I was prepared um, lacrosse wise. I think I adjusted throughout the seasons by week five. I really fell into my shoes. I think I was starting to ball out a little bit. I wish it was like one more week and I was like, okay, like we're in it. Um, it the draft was interesting. You never know, because like I said, people bond to compete. Um, <laughs> compete the bond. Um, I didn't have teammates. Uh, no one really was there from tech. They came in late. I wasn't teammates with her prior, so I didn't know her. I didn't have like alliances. I viewed it as like survivor. Like I said, it's how I think Darwinism. So it was like survivor. Everyone's picking teams. Where do I go? Uh, how do I vibe with certain people? Am I different? Did I piss someone off a year ago on Instagram? Is that why they didn't pick me on their team? <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, those are the types no of things man. that are, yeah, like those are the types of things going in my head. I was like, ah, damn it. Like, is it the way we all think it's the lacrosse world is? I hope not. Like, you know, it's just like so many things are going through my head. So um, it was, it was a cool experience and like social experiment, I want to say, because I think I grew a lot as a person. But also, I was like a teammate. I did. I wasn't. I wouldn't say I was like the best teammate. I'll admit that. I think I was a really good teammate to certain people, and I trust people who trust me. But the second I feel the vibe that you don't trust me, you're just kind of cut off, and that could be me not being a good teammate. Who knows? Like you know what I mean? Like who knows why it happens? But I valued being a better team player in AU because you had to for the team success. And guess what? Your paycheck was on the team win. So you needed to figure it out yeah, to man. like everybody so you can, guys can get that done at the end of the day. Well, that's, that's why team sports are so valuable in general. Um, because independent sports, when you're on your own, you know you don't have to deal with relationships. You don't have to deal with, what did, what did Tom say last night? Like, at, you know, like, uh, you know, so like, you know, nothing against Tom, whoever that is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's that's like the quintessential reason that I want my sons to at least give a shot with team sports. Um, but what I, what I think we, I mean, we did a great job of going kind of through your strength training journey. What I want to do now is I want to take a break, and then for the premium subscribers, I want you guys to be able to see the actual post game where Angie and I get into her current venture into figure comp uh, competitions and where we're going to go from there. Because I want her to be able to describe her training for that, so you guys can listen. So I want to thank you very much for this uh, uh, this discussion here because, Angie, that was a lot of fun. Absolutely. I had so much fun. Thank you. All right. You guys, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back for the post game for premium subscribers. See you guys soon.